Hi and welcome. I uh, felt like I wanted to do another video and I have this Bay Networks model 281158V 1000 megabit uh, switch sitting in my basement for a couple of years now. It's partly broken, it boots up, but some of the ports are broken and the management interface that it has doesn't work anymore um, as it should. Um, so I'm going to take this apart now and um, going to check what components are in there. First off I'm going to start it so you see how it boots up. It has a really nice display here and we're going to see. So now it's running. You can see there are three defective ports, those that show a link here now. The buttons don't do anything. I'm not sure what they should do. Um, yeah, but there's no response. And you can hear the thing is really loud, actually. It has a couple of fans in the back. So I don't know if you could hear it during boot up, there was some relay switching in front here. So I'm guessing we are going to find some relays. The Mac 5s are most certainly going to be separate chips uh, on this unit because it's rather old. And I'm really curious to see what kind of NVRAM it has. It said on the screen that it had 64K, uh, what kind of EEPROM, what kind of flash storage or whatever. Um, and maybe it's even possible to read those out and see if we can find anything interesting. Okay, this is what we get on the inside. It's actually a really nice design. We can see 16 uh, identical slot cards, one for each part probably, socketed in here in a type of PCI slot. The switch mode power supply is here. Um, apparently there's some kind of emergency DC supply here. It's really um, heavy wiring going in here on the secondary side of the switch mode power supply which goes to the outside and there was some sticker on the case which said that both of these need to be connected to backup power. I'm guessing the actual switch logic is below this uh, metal sheet board here and um, here there are also 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, special ICs, I'm guessing these are A6 or maybe FPGAs, although I th think they are A6 because for FPGAs this thing is probably too old. Actually before I start I would like to know uh, what output voltage um, this switch mode power supply has because 
I'm guessing it's a fairly low power because the wire on the secondary is rather thick. So I'm going to measure that because now all the connectors are still in place and then I'm going to disassemble it. So that was 5.5 volts here. So this is interesting. I thought the power supply unit would move out if I would remove all the screws, but apparently it's also screwed onto this metal plate from the bottom. So I'm going to have to remove that first. Okay, so very interesting, uh, very pretty design. Uh, what we can see here is a couple of um, the HC244 buffer line drivers, three crystal oscillators. We see the main CPU, which happens to be a um, MC68EC040. It's a 32-bit Motorola CPU. See some Altera device that I don't recognize some flash devices up here which might contain a firmware or NVRAM actually. These two devices here look like they are DC-DC converters. Then there seems to be some PAL logic here. It's a 22V10H. Um, another uh, two quartz crystals and some MISC parts. So really interesting. I'm now trying to uh, get the boards out and then we'll see further.
So I've uh, quickly ran to the shop and cleaned all the PCBs with the air compressor and now we have here all the parts. We have the main PCB which is huge. It's 42 centimeters, 16 and a half inches uh, long. That's a really large board. We have the front panel board which um, has the dot matrix uh, LCD and the LEDs. We have a power connector board here, which connects to the backup power. We have 16 of these slots with uh, these PCI type uh, connectors. And two of these, which look very similar except for, the, for this part here, this interface. And of course, the switch mode power supply. We're going to have a detailed look at each and every one of these now. So let's start at the switch mode power supply. Um, We'll start at the primary. Uh, you'll see that uh, the power goes through this fast 5 amp fuse here. We have some Y2 capacitors here. Um, the main rectifier is here. And one thing that is a bit surprising is that there are many discrete parts, single transistors here, 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 that you won't see on any modern uh, switch mode power supply unit anymore. You have optical isolators here, which separate the primary from the secondary. And then obviously here, the power output stage, some filtering here, huge toroid um, filtering caps. Here's the 5 volts uh, main output and here some supplementary voltages, presumably. So for the backup power board, you will see these um, high current connectors here, two of these, uh, which supply the 5 volts. Um, on the back side, on the silk print, it says 5 volts adjust and 12 volts adjust for those trim pots here. And then there is, um, interesting, two double diodes in a TO220 casing. And the interesting thing is the two diodes in each casing are parallel and uh, the, the two parallel diodes of each casing are also paralleled. So um, this means they needed a really, really strong diode and they obviously mounted it on one heatsink because if those have thermal drift, drift, it can create really nasty problems if you have diodes in parallel. So then here there are three resistors which are kind of curious because they are 0.01 ohms, 1%, 3 watt, three of these. So this usually looks like some kind of balancing resistor, I'm not really sure. Um, and this here is a, a 120 ohm, 5% resistor. Also not sure what that is for. So these two are rather interesting. These are the network interface cards and you will see on both uh, two main processes. I tried to google the identifier but I couldn't find anything. Most likely they are custom ASICs. See a quartz crystal on this here but not on this which is kind of curious. Um, and for, like un up until here they are pretty identical also on the back side. The back side is only populated with RAM on both boards. Uh, I mean, here's some, some passive stuff, but uh, nothing of interest. Um, one thing that is interesting is here this seems to be uh, uh, probably a DC-DC converter. This is some Intel chip that I didn't find anything about. Here, this is the Phi. It's a AMD device. And it's actually very curious. You don't see this today anymore. Um, the Phi is split into two ICs, and one is the Phi receiver, and one is the uh, Phi transmitter. So usually today you have Phi transceivers, which do both. But back then, uh, those were available as uh, two separate devices. If you're curious, the part number is the AM79865 and 66. Uh, so those are those two. And then um, after the Phi, there's the transceiver, uh, which is a Dallas part, standard part. And interesting, 
after the, the uh, transceiver, here are two read relays. I'm guessing those are the ones that you also heard uh, when the switch booted up. Those are for loopback testing. So basically you can um, short circuit the RX and the TX and the device can do some self-testing if everything up until here is working correctly. So then um, after the transceiver the signal goes down here into that slot. It's just a um, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 7 by 2 uh, standard 2.54 millimeters connector and uh, then there is only on on the main circuit board we will later see there's only the um, transformer which then separates galvanically separates the output from the input here one thing that struck me is that on this board you see nothing interesting in the slip print but on this board here it says Tornado 2. And the Tornado 2, if I remember correctly, was um, a network interface card made by 3Com. So I'm not really sure what's going on here, but those may be PC, I mean truly PCI slots after all, and they may either have just reused parts of the design or um, really used off the shelf parts for that. I'm I'm a bit puzzled about this. Uh, maybe it's just a coincidence, but interesting anyways. So the first thing I did was uh, to remove those two ICs and peel off the cover to reveal what ICs there are. Um, unfortunately, while peeling off the cover, part of the inscription on the IC came off too. And in such a manner that part of the uh, the imprint was left on the IC and part was removed. So I can show you a trick how I recovered the original IC description. Um, it happens to be a uh, standard OTP um, ROM uh, 27C, a uh, Texas Instrument 27PC210. Uh, Both of those. What I did first is place the peeled off label and the IC on my scanner and scan them both in with high resolution. I then opened the scanned graphics file in the GIMP and pasted the peeled off label into my chip image as a new layer. The color of this new layer is then inverted so it matches the color of the chip and it's also mirrored so the font matches. By setting the opacity to something below 100% it becomes a bit transparent and the images can be aligned. If you tweak that a bit you can read in the middle line the 27PC210 very clearly. So then on this part of the board, while it was still in place, I said those are probably DC-DC converters without even looking because of the size. Turns out they are not. Actually, this one says clearly it's a DS1286 a Watchdog IC and a pretty huge one at that. I've uh, Those usually are integrated now into microcontrollers, so you don't see a lot of those around. And this one is also a real-time clock, but needs external power, and that is what this body is for. So this is a benchmark BQ2502. Turns out this is a 3-volt uh, um, power supply, and actually um, su uh, supplies the watchdog, and also can supply an SRAM chip. And those two here happen to be SRAM chips, and actually you can even see a trace going over here. So I'm suspecting they are storing some part of the configuration in SRAM actually, which is kind of odd, you don't see that a lot. So this is the back side, and this here is the outline of the BQ2502. And I just want to see if after over 10 years in the basement it still had any juice left. So I looked into the datasheet and found out what the pins were and sure enough supplies a steady 3.07 volts. So another device that had a sticker on and was socketed which usually indicates something interesting 
um, was this here. And it's a NA2S123AN. And turns out this one is a 256-bit, so 32-byte, TTL PROM, um, in NA Bipolar PROM, so this is pre-CMOS even. Here's another interesting thing. There are five crystal oscillators here. This one has 12.5 MHz, 10 MHz, 30 MHz, 25 and this one has 24.995 MHz. So usually when uh, those frequencies are uneven like that, it has some reason. For example, to generate RS-232 baud rates more easily. But um, with this frequency it has not. And the thing that comes into my mind is maybe it isn't very beneficial uh, if you need two 25 MHz clocks to have them precisely running at 25 megahertz. Maybe maybe it is uh, advan advantageous um, to have those at a slight offset um, as those two are, so that um, maybe there's not some kind of weird resonance phenomenon going on or something like that. So here, as previously stated, we have a lot of rather boring 7.4 um, type logic, um, bus transceivers and so on. Here's a flash array. It's um, eight pieces of the N28F020. Uh, those are 256 kilo times 8 bit um, flash pieces, so a total of 2 megabyte. And over here we have two Altera devices, which turn out to be CPLDs. Um, those are EPM7032LC44s. And over here it's just RAM again. So when looking at the output stages here, if you remember again, um, we had our phi here, the receiver and the transmitter. We had the transceiver here then, and the signal goes down here onto those uh, two by sevens. And then there's the output transformer here. If we turn it around, on the back side we'll again see 16 transformers here. So this leads me to believe that those are actually only for one side. One side is the receiving side, the other side is the transmitting side, and they have separate transformers for receiving and transmitting. So here are the two slots on the right which did not have a PHI interface on board, and you can see that those go down here to those two ports. So I'm guessing that this is for extension, for example, to plug in an optical adapter um, externally um, and have those uh, go onto a port internally here. And this here is a special port for the management interface. It's a standard RS-232 and we see some RS-232 um, converters here, the LT1181. Um, nothing really interesting here. So here we have the front panel. Um, you can see a lot of LEDs. Um, 16 times 4 LEDs, 64 LEDs total. And you can see 6 of the 74HCT273, which is an octal type D flip flop. Now that's a bit curious since I would have expected a serial in parallel out shift register here, something like the 74HCT5995 or something like that. But I'm guessing that they do some kind of multiplexing um, by having all the data in lines uh, in parallel and having six separate clocks so they can do uh, multiplexing that way. In any case, those are not enough to drive all the LEDs here because 6 times 8 is 48 uh, and we have 64 LEDs. So one of the one of the LEDs is always probably has some separate source. I don't know how exactly. Now these devices here I was really interested in, and it turns out they are awesome. Um, they are Siemens SLY 2016, and those are they have their own character ROM, they have their own um, uh, matrix generation and everything, and um, you only need to basically tell them which position, which character, and have to clock it in, and they can also already display 
of the characters, so I'm, I think I'm going to have fun with those. So I hope you enjoyed the video at least as much as uh, I did enjoy to take the thing apart. Um, thank you very much for watching. Bye.